again, we are re-airing another classic WrestleMania that Stone Cold was at also in Dallas, WrestleMania 32, 7 p.m. tomorrow on ESPN. And then next Sunday at 3 p.m. to get you ready for WrestleMania, we're going to be airing WrestleMania 35 also, 3 p.m. next Sunday. So we're reliving these classic uh, Mania moments. And it's funny that we were just talking about how you guys worked off the crowd but that's not going to be an option that Edge and Randy Orton have, for example, at WrestleMania. Now, that is one match, I think, Steve, that could maybe be the thing that when this whole thing passes, we talk about that's the match that defines this WrestleMania. Because I could see those two guys, instead of it being a liability, I could see veterans like that finding a way to make it even more special. Edge and Randy? Man, I don't know, because you, you, when you talk about Randy, you're talking about a guy who's so crafted in the ring and so good at everything. And then you look at the emotional return of Edge. You know, I was just talking to him, you know, at length the other day. And, you know, all of a sudden he just started feeling better and he started, you know, thinking about things. And all of a sudden, you know, when I saw him make that, I asked him point blank, I said, dude, I said, how was that response when you walked out at the Rumble? And he just lit up like a Christmas tree. And he just, I, I knew exactly what he felt. And it just blew his mind. <laughs> and boy, when you get that kind of response, I mean, Peter, there's nothing like it in the world. And he got it. And he, I mean, he got many great pops, but he'd been gone so long, defying all the odds. What are the chances? And here he comes. So like in talking about Drew McIntyre and his moment, here you got Edge making this, he's already made this comeback. And now he's working with, with a, a great, great worker and Randy Orton. So maybe there's an advantage for some of those cats who are a little bit younger. But for the guys who came up through NXT, and that's where they got the bulk of their experience, Steve, that's not the same thing that you went through. And a lot of the guys who have been there for a long time, um, you know, who have worked in empty buildings before. Coming through NXT, it's a small building, but it's packed every time you work. Well, and that, that's, uh, you know, when you've got a packed house like that and they're very passionate, that's an intimate crowd. And you love that kind of feeling. And sometimes, you know, like, Myself, going back to the days of Chris Adams wrestling school, you know, if you're just wrestling in front of an empty building, that's nothing but a thing because that's all you're used to. Then you go out there and you're in front of 70,000 people and guys or the gals, may, maybe they're not really that over. So you're working to. But because they're invested, you know, and maybe in the storyline, maybe in either character. So that, that can be, you know, each one is, can be disconcerting or. GP, uh, the GP podcast, which you can get wherever you get all your ESPN podcasts. And of course, Steve's incredible pro podcast, uh, which you can find wherever you get podcasts as well. Um, but we were talking about the Mount Rushmore's um, and I'm curious um, to what yours is. And I also have a couple of questions about uh, maybe some modern talent. But, but first, when you're forced to choose four on a Mount Rushmore of pro One, I let other people do the Rushmore's. Um, did you have, as a kid, who were the top few that you, and I've heard you say this before, but for people who haven't been here before and haven't heard you, who are the few that you really admired coming up? The, the two I will give you, you got to have Hogan, you got to have Flair. I'll stop right there because, you know, those are the two that if you're building a, a Mount Rushmore, those are two that you got to have. And I won't say any more than that.
Network. Great interview. Um, was he absolutely as smooth and easy a guy to work with as you ever worked with in your career? Man, Br uh, Brett and I had such a crazy chemistry as well. For your body at all times. Uh, for, yeah, Brett, Brett was awesome. Uh, Steamboat, you know, he, Steamboat was a guy that, God dang, man, he filled in all the gaps. Uh, but, yeah, Brett Hart was – he was very, very special. He's one of to orchestrating and building a match. And I thought it was a master of the craft. At what point were you um, at your lowest mentally on your ascent? Because now, Steve, we almost take for granted, you know, Steve Austin's one of the greatest of all time. He had a, you know, your career is just looked at almost like perfection. That, that's not really the full story. You know, your story from WCW to uh, eventually becoming the Taskmaster, there, there's a lot of rough spots there where I'm sure, knowing the kind of competitor you are, um, it must have been difficult and you must have had doubts. At what stage? was riding with some really good guys in Dutch Mantel. Guys were dropping a lot of knowledge on me. Gorgeous Gary Young. I uh, got into WCW. was finding my groove. I was, you know, respected amongst my peers. As Japan, and I'm, I'm, at, I'm at home. Paul Lee gives me a call. I go to ECW. You know, I cut one promo, really. I mean, I did some skits, but I cut one promo. Pauly was kind of starting to dial me in. I got the call to go to New York. And when I got the call to go to New York, and I answered that. land and you don't have anything to base your existence on and so that was the hardest time I think when I was a ringmaster and that's why after six months or however long it was I'm stone cold from Victoria Texas but the ringmaster was a period when I was lost. When I walked, watched myself, you know, kind of go into the ring, I'm like, who is that guy? And, Peter, when you walk out in front of a crowd, was really helping me back then so that was the hardest time well and i guess i've had kevin sullivan on my mind too much this week and, and said uh taskmaster instead of ringmaster but either way it's, it's just time to move on and not worry about it Man, knew it was time to, to move on because, you know, and of course I was just talking to Paul E down there in Florida the other day, but and we're very, very close.
uh, that's what we called it, the WWF at the time. So yeah, man, working one night a week uh, doesn't doesn't really cut it. Uh, if I could have stayed down there for you know six, eight, nine months, who who knows? To make the money and and really. When you're in the trenches, even when we were in WCW and we were battling, you know, w, WWF at the time, you know, it wasn't a Monday Night War, but it was a war. And we, we kind of felt like we were putting on like a better wrestling. Pro defined your career is, is you versus Vince McMahon. That is a totally fair assessment, I think, for a fan to make. When you guys worked together, um, what was it like, him, him learning to wrestle at that time? How much did you walk him through things? How much did he lean to you? Vince, who wasn't, you know, the gears in the business from from a performance standpoint, you know, in-ring talent, he was the guy that knows everything because from the ground up, from when he started to where he's at now, he was that guy. So those matches are kind of put together in a fashion where, you know, you kind of know what's up. So we're on the same page, you know, pretty much 99% of the time. There might be an ad lib or something put in. What's going on? From a mechanic standpoint, you know, Vince is pretty awkward. And, you know, he's jacked up. He's strong. Uh, every, the stuff he does in the ring, everything feels pretty good. He'll sling you. When he's going to throw you, he's going to throw your ass, you know. Uh, but, but he's kind of clumsy. But the thing I love about working with Vince was his character was so over. As a heel, he was so – He that guy is a natural-born performer. He's probably the greatest promoter that the sporting world or sports entertainment, whatever, boxing has ever known. But as a world. Of course, I was so over as a baby face. It magnified what I did, magnified what he did, and, and what he did magnified what I did. So just great chemistry and always pretty much always on the same page. And that was the kind of stuff that transcended the wrestling business and turned into water cooler talk. Even the people that didn't watch wrestling started with But that one transcended the business. And, yes, ultimately, I think it did kind of uh, I would define or make my career, however, however you would say it. But I loved feuding with Vince McMahon. And I learned so much from uh,
Is that what they were doing, and was it effective with the talent? I can't say if that's what they were doing. You know, only they could. But, you know, I've always said about Vince, you know, he will, you know, he won't ask. Man, I can't explain it sometimes. When I start talking about the business, I get very excited. But, man, when, when you establish a deep relationship with a crowd, you'll damn near do anything to entertain them. I mean, you're talking about, you know, getting color. ESPN. Last question, Steve. A, a friend asked me earlier, and I was almost taken aback. It was almost like too much for me to answer. Um, she has zero interest in wrestling, does not get it, has never tried to get it, and asked me, what do you love about it? And I'm almost so in it at this point that I hadn't answered it in a long time. I'm just curious for you. What do you love the most about professional wrestling? Man, like right now or just like because, because when I was doing it? good enough and to be over enough from a character standpoint with with within the angle of what you're you're shooting and the person with what you're trying to work with there's so many things going on and you're trying to create the perfect mix of this together hey you heard it from stone cold this whole thing is a shoot the coronavirus is a legitimate shoot um and uh yeah thank you steve i appreciate it. i'm definitely staying home and being safe you do the same in la and uh, i hope to see you soon
bombs. We're on the big channel today, okay? Oh, I thought this was still uh, no. Know, this is ESPN between official, buddies. This is ESPN's official Instagram. We're very commercial. Oh, today, sorry. Man. I'm very sorry about that. No. Um. Now, fun in ECW. Of course. And you, uh, and you were a real ECW fan. That was you were big a, time. Yeah, you That's, were real that fan. was my main. That was my main ECW. Staying up two in the morning, watching it on MSG. Thirteen year olds there, you know what I mean? Like it was a little bit, it was more grown, you know, and there was some serious stuff going on, you know. <laughs> they, I'm sure, like, they, they had. I remember one time Al Snow, he brought all the heads out. He brought out all the strippers from Goldfinger's, which was a which was a, a strip, popular adult establishment. A popular adult establishment on Queens Boulevard. Was also there for a couple of like they used to do those the dark shows, mm -hmm. house shows, you know, yeah. yeah, the house shows where you, they would just come to the garden. I remember we went to a couple of those. I was actually at the one. get immediately get third row or second row you know so it was guaranteed someone was going to jump into the crowd Sabu you know Tajiri someone of that ilk <laughs> so uh first in which you paint very vivid pictures that are crazy and hard to understand how you got there. Did your brain ever envision a time this crazy?
don't know what the hell's going on. So I don't know what's up. I'm just chilling out for a little bit. I was planning on dropping my album within the next couple months. You know, I don't know if that's the best idea. I don't want to do a digital program. A lot of things are contingent on gatherings because I like to do things for people. Like make ice cream, like have this, have that, have little art shows, have little parties and listenings. So this is kind of cramping my style, but... It's a great studio. You have to come by. It's in, it's in somewhere, and you should come by. <laughs> <laughs> um. So wait. So do you have any? So if you want to record at home or do art at home, you can just. Out on my iPad, which is good. It's a good. It's a good digital sketchbook. Uh, also got pen and paper, like a caveman. You know, I'm watching a lot of UFC. I'm watching from from one all the way. about it's the characters in 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 UFC the the matchups are so magical you know these men have just worked their entire lives to fight and you make a weight you agree upon Nice is at his style. That's what makes everything amazing. Everyone brings a different discipline to the to the octagon and to the ring. That you know you're fighting Tony Ferguson who dances. You know. Came on my show and then she dropped the belt to Rose, Rose in the in uh, in Barclays. So I got her gloves. I still have her Himalayan salt from her.
might be able to get some money out of them, both of us. We should. We should. Shout out to Funk Flex in the room, by the way. Funk, Funk Flex. Flex. Who looks, who, speaking of looking trim, looks tremendous right now. Well, he does the 40 day reset. <laughs> See? That's I know amazing. that for Funk. Ever, ever, ever read a Western beef ad? Never. Funk Flex is the only one that he, he, he shaped our lives. Like, it was an honor to be. You know, to have freestyles with him that people consider legendary freestyles in the rap, you know? the level of importance for shaping our lives. I mean, at the end of the day, he was who we listened to, and that's, you just remember, it's iconic times, sitting in the car, doing all, it's, it's, it was the soundtrack to our lives, you know? That's really what it was. Well, I think seven in general, like, in the beginning, like, you know, that Ed Lover and Dr. Dre, you know, when they were on in the mornings, used to love that, Star and Buck Wild, you guys, you know, it was like generations of this stuff, it's, What's your what's your favorite all time Funk Flex freestyle besides yourself? Uh, it's not. Def, I mean, mine's five. Flex had to just turn him off, like, yo, chill, so he's doing too much. It's going, no, going JR crazy. was getting his. JR was getting his. Yeah. That's the job of the JR writer. Like, the guy who's in that spot, you need he did to, it, when yes. you're there, go in. He's the going man. He went he's in. the going man. You know, That's, Young Buck, you got to go in. Like, I mean, Young Buck was there to, you know, he was there. All, the G unit were there to do damage. They did. By know. the way, Young Buck is very slept on. At, at his best, of Young course. Buck is very nice. Of course. A lot of Southern, like... Man, B Jizzle, B G is Ooh. one of the f most fire. B G yeah. right now, B G right now would be so scorched. Amazing man, thank you for having me on. Anytime appreciate I do you, anything brother. ever, you're always there. I love you for it. I appreciate you. And um, be safe. And we'll talk uh, We'll talk wrestling and UFC again soon. Okay. You're a beautiful man. Thank you, Bronson. Take care. network i appreciate you guys we'll be back we'll do some more wwe content like this soon if you're out there be safe don't go outside do not need to chill outside i i can really only talk about please stay at home and chill social distancing is real we will get through this i appreciate you all be easy